what is a species? So the biological species concept defines a species as a group of organisms that can potentially interbreed and produce fertile offspring. This is under natural conditions. There's a lot of organisms that can interbreed and create viable offspring, but that would be under unnatural conditions where we force that. Speciation is the formation of a new species. A gene pool is a population's entire collection of genes and alleles. A reproductive barrier is a mechanism that prevents a group of organisms from sharing a gene pool. An extinction. Extinction is the death of all of the individuals in a species. So what is a species? Here's a couple examples I threw up to kind of illustrate the complexity in defining what a species is. If you look at examples of Homo sapiens here, we're incredibly diverse. We have a bunch of different morphologies. We have different features and it's pretty cool. There's a lot of diversity in our species, but we're all the same species. Now, if you look on the other side, you have a bunch of birds. These are the Tapaculos, and this is a group of birds that lives in the Andean foothills of South and Central America. Now, Tapaculos look incredibly similar. They look so similar, in fact, if you have two different species of Tapaculo in your hand, it can be difficult to tell whether or not they're different species. One of the only ways to tell them apart is either to do some genetic work and look at their actual genes or to hear them sing because they do sing different songs depending on the species. So how do we define a species? If it's that hard to tell the difference between one species and another because they either look so diverse or different species look so similar, how, how is that maintained in a natural population? Well, there's a lot of different mechanisms that maintain that kind of reproductive isolation. Those barriers are defined in two groups. There's prezygotic, before the formation of a zygote, before sperm hits egg. Those prezygotic barriers and postzygotic barriers, barriers that exist after an organism's gametes meet and they form a zygote. So you can think of that as before reproduction and after reproduction. There's a lot of different prezygotic barriers, things that prevent um, different species from reproducing. There's temporal isolation. So a lot of different species will mate at different times of the year, and that will prevent them from mixing their genes. There's habitat isolation. A lot of different species exist in very specific niches in different habitats and they prevent crossing paths in that way and that prevents them from reproducing. There's also mechanical isolation. So the physical structures, the anatomy of species might not be compatible. A lot of different damselflies have very specific mating structures. A lot of different mammals have very specific mating structures. We saw a duck example that had a very, very specific mating structure. So there's mechanical isolation. And then there's gametic isolation, where the male and female gametes will fail to unite for some reason or another. So these are all prezygotic barriers. They're barriers before an organism reproduces. But there's also postzygotic barriers. So in the case where two organisms that are different species reproduce and they do create offspring we call that a hybrid oftentimes those hybrids are sterile or if they were to reproduce every generation after that would be less and less healthy and eventually you would have hybrid breakdown where those individuals would no longer be able to reproduce that's kind of like the opposite of fitness we call that hybrid breakdown with a reduction of hybrid fertility Let's look at an example of a prezygotic barrier. These are two species of warbler from Europe, the western and eastern greenish warbler. We're looking basically at their songs plotted on a, on a three-dimensional space. Now these eastern and western greenish warblers, there are certain areas where they are 
sympatric and they exist in the same area and they could interbreed. Well, where you have them very close to each other in that, in that space where they could interbreed, that's A. And you can see that their songs are different and they're very distinct. That is a case of a prezygotic barrier where these two different species separate with different calls so that they don't mate. Now, what is B? B are examples of their songs where they are not coexisting, where the Eastern species is found very far from the Western species. And if you compare their songs where they're not together, they actually do sound very similar to each other, but these populations will not uh, co-occur. So they're, they're separated spatially. So here's a behavioral mechanism that is a prezygotic barrier. They have differences in songs wherever that possibility exists and where the possibility of them overlapping does not exist, well, then the songs converge and they're similar because there's no longer a danger of them interbreeding. Now, here's an example of a postzygotic barrier. This is a jaglion, a jaguar and a lion that reproduced and created a jaglion. This is a hybrid and this hybrid is sterile. It's incapable of reproducing. So this is after reproduction, but it's still a barrier towards the carrying of genes down generations and generations. Now, if you think about it from a fitness perspective, this is not a very fit organism because it can't reproduce. The fitness goes to zero.